Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to the start of a series on a point of sale. So I got this image as usual from the internet. So I just googled point of sale UI and I kind of like this one. So we're going to try and replicate this and create a point of sale for a restaurant or food or takeaway or something like that. But this concept can obviously be used for other systems as well, maybe hotels or anything like that. Now, the idea is just to give you an idea of how to go about doing something like this. So we won't cover every feature of a point of sale, of course. So this is not meant to be production. You can use it. You can use this for an actual client, no problem. But obviously it won't have all the features. So you have to learn how to add your own features if you want to. So that's the point of the tutorial. So as you can see here, this will be an area where we shows what is available in the store. And then whoever is using this can click on one of these items to bring them to this list here. And this will add uh, every time they click on something. If it already exists, the quantity will go up. If it doesn't exist, they need to be added to the list and then this will show us the total that they have. And then we can click on checkout here or cancel the order. Once that order is uh, created, then it will proceed to print the results of that order and the amount in whatever fashion that you want. And then, of course, we'll have what is known as inventory. This is inventory management uh, where we have to put things in stock and then calculate how much each one or put an amount there and a quantity so that every time uh, we click on it, the quantity reduces. That's one way to do it. But for example, things like restaurants where you have, you can recreate the same item over and over. You don't need that system. So you can get to choose uh, how you want to design your own system. Further on, we're going to Eventually, we're going to do one where we use barcodes, but this one will not have barcode. Uh, we will not be using a barcode scanner in this one. So and then after that, we'll have uh, access control as well, where you can go to the admin section if you're an admin and see how many items you've sold today and which were those items really. So just to give you an example, I had done something, uh, a point of sale for a client years back. So this uh this was the thing so this was a, for a very simple shop so they didn't need any barcode system or anything like that they were just typing amounts though this will be different a little bit because you can just click on this and you can search as well for what you want and everything that you click here will auto it will change in order if you click on this one too much it will always be at the top Whatever you click the most will go to the top, just like that. That's what the order will be. So let me see this uh, login. Hopefully I remember. Yeah, so something like this where you, but instead of having uh, those items we have there on this one, they were just typing numbers because that's what the client wanted. So you, you make what the client wants. Don't argue with the client. Just make whatever they want and uh, you do a good job. So this is how this worked, where you can edit the quantity of an item, uh, which increases the amount. You can delete some items that you don't like. And um, finally, you can click checkout to actually check out. And it asks you for how much the client has paid when you put an amount. If you put an amount that's too small, it will tell you that uh, that amount is too small. Uh, if you do that, it will give you the change and then it will print out a receipt. If you have a receipt printer connected to your computer, uh, these printers are USB. So once you connect uh, the USB and you set it as the default printer, it's going to print to it. So you have to test it out and see how the receipt comes out and make adjustments. You create the receipt using HTML, just a, an HTML page create the receipt and whatever you put there will be printed automatically when you click next customer. And also if you have that tray, you know, that money tray thing that opens, it will open. Now, the way you rig that is to connect it to your receipt printer. And as soon as the receipt is printed, the cash 
I think it's called a cash register or something. That thing will open and then the cashier can remove some money from there and close it back. So that's how this system works. Um, I just don't have the receipt printer here because obviously I bought it just for the client and gave the client. So I don't have that anymore, but this is what it does. It does this in the background. It will open a window and then create a receipt and from that receipt print it and then it's done. Here it's because I set the PDF printer as the default because I don't have any other printer here connected to this particular computer. So I set it to the PDF printer. So that's why it's bringing me this. And uh, yeah, so otherwise a receipt would have been printed here. And there's also an admin section here just, just shows today's total sales. And you can select a specific date that you want to view these things on just like that. And uh, you can export this data to an external file. Uh, it's practically just a text document. That way you can import it later if you want, if you move between systems, maybe. And just like this, or you can delete one of these items that you don't like, just like that. Okay, so easy peasy, right? So what exactly will we learn in this creation of this version of a point of sale? So what we'll learn is what's on this list here. First of all, we're going to learn how to use PHP desktop. This is the software that I used in this particular case to put my, uh, my software in a container of some kind, right? So that instead of the client having to open a browser when they want to run their software, they just click on the executable file and it opens like this and yet it's running PHP. So you get the best of both worlds. You get to create a, um, a Windows application that runs with PHP. So everything good, good, good. So we'll learn some PHP, of course, which will uh, teach us some access control how to control systems so that only the admin can see what information they want to see without having the cashier to see that information as well. So that's access control. We'll learn some of that. We'll also learn how to use SQLite because this system does use SQLite. I didn't use MySQL here because I didn't think it was worth it because to start with, um, MySQL is multi-user, right? It's a robust system that when there are thousands of users, it works very well, but it's going to be overkill to just use it for one user like that. But if you prefer MySQL, that's okay. And secondly, it takes quite a bit to install MySQL. In this version, I can give the client a flash drive and once they open the software, they don't have to install anything at all. They just need to open the software, it runs and there's a database connected there. Whereas if you are using MySQL, you have to have them install MySQL on that system. So that's just a little bit more cumbersome. So I use SQLite for convenience uh, because it works well. This is a single user application, so it would do just fine with SQLite. And then you will also learn some JavaScript, obviously, because this relies heavily on JavaScript and uh, Ajax, of course. Then we'll learn how to create charts because I want us to create charts instead of just having these numbers here, we can have a chart that shows the progress over time, which I think will be more beneficial. And of course, we're going to use Bootstrap. So you will learn how to use Bootstrap in PHP desktop or just in general, how to use Bootstrap for a quick UI. If you have a client that is very difficult uh, you don't, you, they don't really know what they want, uh, specifically in terms of the UI, you will save yourself some time by using Bootstrap because uh, buttons are already there, things, you just put the classes that you want. So I've saved a ton of time using Bootstrap, especially with clients that don't know what they want. There are clients that are very specific and they'll give you their mockups and in that case, uh, you don't need to worry about bootstrap, things like bootstrap. Okay, so hopefully uh, this will provide some good info for you in this series. So I want to keep it short. That's why I don't want to use barcodes and anything like that. I want us to keep it simple and not have too many videos in this series. 
hopefully fingers crossed yeah so hopefully you like the content and please please subscribe i really appreciate uh, anyone that subscribes every single subscriber counts so it's going to help the channel grow and uh, win win i get to make more videos uh you get to learn more stuff right so we both win when you subscribe so please hit the subscribe button so that next time i will be encouraged to make more videos i'll see you in the next video